Okay, this once again is showing a pickup coil in a distributor. You can see the ignition control module in the center, and you can see the E coil with the primary windings. So what will happen is this pickup coil will develop a magnetic field. The magnetic field will collapse. It'll collapse because of a particular cylinder location. It'll send that signal back to the control module, and that will control the, the current flowing into those primary windings. Okay, so what I need you to recognize is that this whole facet of having a distributor obviously has disappeared. So something needs to take the place of that, and that is our crank sensor. That will be our signal that will get our signal off a trigger wheel and do the same exact thing as everything that you're seeing here. Now, if we get away from using a magnetic signal, we can have what's called a Hall effect switch. Right? A Hall effect switch is used. Uh, in a stationary sensor and has a trigger wheel but this trigger wheel now is a shutter and different from a magnetic pulse generator a hall effect requires a small input of voltage to create uh, an output or a signal therefore this gives us a digital signal right we have a shutter you'll see the hall effect unit you'll see the permanent magnet and then you'll have a shutter that will break the signal across it. When it breaks the signal, it blocks the voltage that's being sent across it, and we get our signal. Right? You'll see these on cam sensors, on crank sensors, the 3800s that we do so much teaching on, they use a Hall effect type of thing. Now, obviously, if we have a crank sensor that's magnetic, we can test it looking for AC voltage output, even with it out, without it being plugged in. With these, we can't do that. We have to get a voltage signal with a voltmeter and look for that signal to, to either have voltage or not have voltage. And it makes a square wave because it's digital. It's on off. It's zero and one. So this is giving you another picture of the shutter, right? So you can see that we have a sensor here and a permanent magnet. We send a signal across it. When the distributor turns, the shutter blocks it, shutting it off, and we get a digital signal. If you really want to know, this signal is called a Schmidt trigger inside the sensor itself. Fun to say, Schmidt. That converts the analog signal into a digital signal. So a lot of cars has a combination of both. So if you look here, the Hall Effect camshaft reference sensor and crankshaft positioning sensor have an electronic circuit built into that that creates a zero to five volt signal as shown below. And these Hall Effect sensors are three wire sensors. If you look here, you've got this magnetic sensor. It's got a wire connected to it. This would slide. This is one that you'd find on a Chrysler. Anyone who has a Jeep knows about this one. This slides through the bell housing and sits over this area here. As the engine turns around, the magnetic field goes away when it drops in one of these holes and it's not magnetic anymore. And then it builds up an attraction again. That generates a pulse. And now we get a square wave. So we're using a magnetic sensor as a Hall effect. Over here, you can see a camshaft sensor. And what'll happen is the sensor will ride over the top of this and when it hits one of these spots, it loses its signal. When it loses its signal by having the magnetic attraction go away, it sets a pulse. And if you notice on a cam sensor, notice cylinder one is here, right, in a solid area here. And it knows this by the timing of what's around it. Cylinder two has a break. Cylinder three has two breaks. Cylinder four has three breaks. Cylinder five has another break because it came after these. Cylinder six has two, right? So it's a pattern that comes through. And now you end up having signals that look like this. And because of a timing chain that ties the crankshaft to the camshaft, you now pair the two together and you can have a timing related event going on, timing the cam to the crank and the timing of spark plugs to uh, fuel injectors. Okay, so magnetic crank position sensors are magnetic sensors. Therefore, they are going to change that magnetic field, which will report back to the module as a AC type of signal. 
and that signal will be used by that module and the computer uh, for piston position and engine speed. Many times when a magnetic crankshaft positioning sensor goes bad, you'll notice the TAC doesn't operate. The RPM doesn't show up on a scan tool, and that's a pretty good signal that the crank sensor is not working. If you get an RPM signal and you have no spark, usually you're going after something else because that crank sensor is making a signal. Now, when we go into other vehicles, we'll see that we have optical sensors. They use light from an LED and a phototransistor to signal the computer. There's an interrupter disc between the LED and the transistor that has slits that allow light from the LED to trigger that phototransistor. Most optical sensors are located inside the distributor. They use two rows of slits for individual cylinder uh, recognition and precise. So you'll have a slot for each cylinder, and then you'll have 360 slots all the way around. So now it not only knows when that cylinder is, it knows exactly the position of that cylinder. This is what a optical sensor looks like. If you look over here, here is the cylinder location ones, and then you have 360 slots all the way around that can figure out exactly where you are. This is a crank angle sensor, and this would contain the LED and the uh, receiver on the other side. Here's your windows, and that signal would be fired through, and every time that one of those slots in between these openings hit, it now sends a signal. And you can see here, it lives under a cover because it's a photo sensor. What's the spark, right? The spark is a giant light. So if we don't have a shield covering it, it will sense erroneous signals by the spark influencing the photosensor. Always make sure that this shield is on one if you ever are working on one. 